recognize how low and dirty this fight has been at times. He has been attacked on social media. He has been attacked in person. What the bail industry will do, there are no limits. And so please, please give a very warm welcome to this person who is fighting for justice for all Californians, Assemblymember Rob Bonta. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Natasha, for that kind introduction. You guys pumped up to be here? Yeah. I was about to jump into that dance party that was happening out here. That, that, that looked like fun. A lot of great energy. First of all, thank you for being here. Anyone here from San Diego? Woo! All right, San Diego's in the house. Los Angeles? Woo! All right, Central Valley? Woo! Everywhere. Hey. All right, I gotta say, how about Oakland? Is Oakland in the house? Woo! Oakland's here. All right, thank you for being here. I, I appreciate it. Antelope Valley. Is the Antelope Valley? Awesome. Well, well, thank you for being here, and, and I know why you're here. Are you here to create more justice and equity? Yes. Are you here to create more opportunity and inclusion? Yes. That's why we're here, and we're here fighting together. And you know, as I know, that we have a fundamentally broken money bail system. Yes. A money bail system that punishes poor people simply for being poor, that criminalizes poverty, and that judges individuals and makes decisions on their liberty based on the size of their wallet, not the size of their risk. Is that wrong? Yes. yes. That is totally wrong and fundamentally wrong. And we know that there's a better way, that there's a fairer way, there's a safer way, there's a more humane way, there's a more compassionate way. And we propose that in SB 10 and AB 42. And those bills are moving. These are on two-year cycles. And right now, these bills are closer to getting passed and signed than ever before. And it's because of you. So thank you. Thank you. We've gained tremendous momentum along the way. We have courts issuing decisions saying the, the money bail system is fundamentally broken and needs to be fixed and can't continue the way it is. We have the Chief Justice, Tani Kantil Sakuuye, issuing a report saying that the money bail system is broken and must be reformed. We have the Attorney General, Javier Becerra, saying that it needs to be fixed and changed. We have the Governor committed to fix our broken money bail system. We have legislators who weren't yet ready last year to support money bail reform who are ready this year. And the reason for that is because of you. So thank you. We've, we've come a long way. We've built momentum. We're on the precipice. We're closer than ever before. So uh, when you go in today and, and meet with legislators, let them know how you feel. Tell your stories. Share your passion and your commitment. Because this is something that's going to get done together. It's going to be done with what I call the inside-outside game, with legislators on the inside championing uh, this critical reform, and you on the outside, the people, rising up, making your voices heard, and being loud to make sure that we work together to get this done. So are we going to get this done together? Yeah. Are you ready to fight for money bail reform? Yeah. You ready to win? Yeah. I am too. Proud to fight with you. Thank you. partners and I want to invite up now one of the leaders of a coalition of an organization that we work with extremely co closely Pico California please welcome Reverend Caitlin Dean Woo! somebody say it with me I believe that we will win 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 Good morning, guys. My, my name is Reverend Kaylin Dean, and I'm with Pico, California. We are the largest, yeah, clap it up for my organization. <laughs> we are the largest multiracial, faith-based community organizing network in the state. We represent 73 cities connected to 480 interfaith congregations and representing 450,000 families and growing. We are so proud to stand here with the ACLU in partnership and we're so proud to sponsor or co-sponsor SB 1421. 
I'd like to start off by thanking Senator Nancy Skinner um, for her leadership in putting forth such an important piece of legislation for all Californians. But this bill is most important to families who have lost loved ones to officers um, or to officer-involved shootings, families who under the current law are left to search for answers while they grieve. Yep. The current law that allows police departments to withhold important information relating to their investigations on police shootings and other excessive use of misconduct, it further traumatizes them, extending the grieving process. It is immoral to keep our families and communities in the dark who have already endured the pain of losing a loved one. SB 1421 shines a light on police Increase overall police legitimacy. For too long, California police departments have been able to hide behind a veil of secrecy, advocating for keeping records of misconduct private due to not wanting to overemphasize or sensationalize police officer misconduct. That is frankly out of touch, and we won't stand for it any longer. Enough is enough. Sacramento, that our communities will no longer stand for the wall of secrecy that the police continue to hide behind. The public has a fundamental right to know, and we're looking forward to SB 1421 restoring that right. Thank you. Now I would like to invite up a true warrior for justice. Assembly member and Dr. Shirley Weber Woo! is the voice other methods in order to solve the problem. This is not something so strange. It's not something radical. It is what they do in every other community other than ours. They seek answers to bring to somehow or another a peaceful solution where our officers are protected and our public is protected. And that's all we're asking in AB 931. We're asking for justice. We're asking for good policing. And we're asking to protect not only our officers, but also the public, yes. and to bring a peaceful and safe solution to sometimes difficult situations. Yes. And so that's what AB 931 is. It's reasonable. Yes. After years of struggling, and after all of us have heard so many stories about what needs to happen, and so many of us as mothers and fathers have trained our sons and our daughters on how to react, don't move. Put your hands on the, on the steering wheel. Don't do anything strange. Be cooperative. 
be, be, you know, just everything that you could possibly imagine, we have done that. And so when people say we should teach our children how to act around police, we have done that. And then we've seen, still seen the negative results. And so this is a reasonable bill to a difficult situation. But it's what happens every day in this nation in other communities other than ours. I feel like Fannie Hamer, who says, I am sick and tired of being sick and tired. I'm sick of the names being called. I'm sick of us reading a list of those who've been hurt and injured. I'm sick and tired of having my colleagues and others tell me how sad it is and yet do very little to bring justice to our communities. And I think our community is tired of once again lingering on and on, wondering, will we have the courage, will we have the desire to move forward and to bring change? I want to challenge you today to not only to be here for this moment, but for the long haul that we know will happen. You know what happened when we did AB 953? You were here for the long haul, all the way to the signing of the document three weeks after it left the floor of the assembly by the governor. And we're still fighting that and making sure that that brings some justice to our communities. That we have a journey to, um, to, to basically move forward, to make sure that people get the correct information about what AB 931 is really all about, and to continue to move forward that's there. Some folks say I'm courageous. I'm not courageous. My father was courageous when he left with the Klans in Hope, Arkansas. He was a man with a vision, and he was courageous because his life was being threatened. But he taught me the importance of standing tall and standing straight and realizing that this life only matters when you work to help others make their life matter also. And so we are committed to bringing justice and equality to this nation. We're committed to making sure that we can stop what is happening that is so unjust and so unfair in our communities. And yes, it will take the efforts and prayers and opportunities and work of each and every one of us. But we can do this if we do it together, if we do it collectively, and if we do it with a focus upon making sure that it is what is right and what is just for every community. I always say that I was listening to an African proverb that said, uh, when you get to heaven, that you're going, when you meet the maker, he's going to not, what is he going to say to you? He's going to say, roll up your sleeves and let me see your arms. And he'll look at them and he says, where are your wounds? Where are your cuts? And if you don't have any, he's gonna say, wasn't there something in life worth, worth fighting for? And I tell people, I remember that because I'm sure I'm gonna be chopped up when I get there. <laughs> I'm gonna be able to show all the wounds for myself and generations to come. But in the end, in the end, we will know that this life was worth fighting for. And so is AB 931. Thank you so very much for being here.